Hello, we're here with Sarah Reinefeld, who is running for the 36th District uh, State Representative Position 2. Would you like to go ahead with your uh, two-minute introduction? Thank you. It's great to be with you this evening. My name is Sarah Reinefeld, and I am running to be your next State Representative. I am a Managing Assistant Attorney General, working mom, community advocate, union member, and proud progressive Democrat. I have called the 36th district home for over 20 years, and it is my honor to serve you as your political director and to work with you to get out the vote and to help build one of the strongest political operations in Washington state. I'm running for state house now to make government work for the people and to create a future we can all believe in. The COVID-19 crisis has shown us that too many people are struggling. Workers on the front lines, small businesses, working families. The legislature is at a crossroads. We can either continue with the status quo or we can invest in a more sustainable and equitable future. I have spent my entire career serving the people of Washington State and six legislative sessions serving in Olympia. As an Assistant Attorney General, I have fought on the front lines for Washington workers. I have the proven experience to work with you and for you to create the systems change. A fair tax system, a universal health care system, affordable housing, a quality public education system and access to early learning, and bold action on climate and a Green New Deal. I am running a strong grassroots campaign that is all about the people of the 36th district, not special interests. I am proud to have so much grassroots support from leaders in the district and to be endorsed by King County Council Member Jeannie Cole Wells, Seattle City Council Member Andrew Lewis, uh, former Congressman J J McDermott, um, and so many progressive allies, including the Washington Education Association, the Alliance for Gun Responsibility, Senator Joe Wynn, Representative Valdez. There's a complete list at sarahreinevald.com. I'm looking forward to the discussion and I would love to have your support. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, so now we'll move into the four prepared questions and Mackenzie has posted the first one into the box, um, into the chat box. And Summer, would you like to go ahead with question number one? Washington State is facing a significant decline in revenues due to the impact of the coronavirus. Do you pledge to vote against closing this deficit with budget cuts? What taxes will you look to raise in order to deal with this crisis? Yeah, I think that's an excellent question. Uh, we live in the state with the most upside down tax code in the nation. And I think we're tied with Nevada in regards to our heavy dependence on sales tax, which is wrong. We need to rebalance our tax code and modernize our tax code, tax the wealthiest Washingtonians, and make it fairer on working families and individuals. So I do pledge to vote against closing the deficit with budget cuts. We're looking at a $7 billion deficit between now and 2023. What I think the state legislature needs to do next session and into the special session is pass both a combination of progressive revenue um, as well as looking at utilizing the rainy day fund. So in terms of pro progressive revenue, it's absolutely time that we passed a progressive tax capital gains tax in this state. Um, you know, we're one of the few states in the nation that doesn't tax capital gains. Um, and it's past time that Washington passed a capital gains tax. I want to be a leader um, in terms of passing this tax and working with my colleagues in the legislature um, to ensure that we're getting this done next session. I also support further closing tax loopholes. Um, and I think we need to look at a greater variety of wealth taxes. So I'm supported by Senator Wynn, and I know he's proposed um, a tax on individuals, particularly CEOs, that are making more than $1 million per year. Um, and I think we need to look at that type of option. I want to work uh, with Representative Frame and others, including Senator Wynn and Senator Wellman, that are on the tax reform work group. Um, or the tax work group to look at what we can do to rebalance um, and modernize our tax structure long term. Um, and that includes a uh, passage of an income tax. We have absolutely need to look at how we can tax uh, personal wealth 
um, and uh, reducing sales tax um, and also our reliance on property tax. And lastly, I think we should look at uh, reforming our B&O tax. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, question two has been posted into the chat box and Laura, would you like to go ahead with that one? The coronavirus crisis has led to thousands of Washingtonians losing their health insurance when they lost their jobs at a moment when healthcare is more important than ever. Do you support moving to a state-based Medicare for all system? I do. I absolutely think that healthcare is a human right, not a privilege, and that we need to move towards a state-based Medicare for all system or a single payer system that will be comprehensive and not dependent on employment. I, you know, Washington State, I think, has done a good job um, in making, you know, some gains in this area with Cascade Care, um, which is a public option, um, but it hasn't done enough um, to actually create a single payer system. I know that there's a work group um, and that work group is doing some great work on looking at a framework to how to make this possible. Um, and I absolutely want to work with my colleagues um, to lead in this area and to support the, the proposals that are coming forward uh, for a single payer system in Washington state. Um, I also think that as part of that single payer system, we need robust investment in mental health and behavioral health care. Um, unfortunately, you know, we've, we've seen through COVID-19 how the state has been chronically underfunding public health, um, but I think we're 48th in the nation in terms of funding mental health. Um, and we need to do more to invest in mental health and in treatment and behavioral health. I think, you know, they're the only um, two state-sponsored uh, treatment programs in the state are in Chehalis and Spokane um, that are state-sponsored specifically. Um, I think we need more treatment facilities, for example, in the North End, um, in King County in general. Uh, we also need more mental health beds, which is so critically important. Um, and I think we need to look at paying our healthcare workers more competitive wages uh, and benefits. So in terms of uh, a universal healthcare system, I absolutely think we need to move towards a universal healthcare system. Um, I'm going to be um, excited to see what recommendations uh, come forward um, from the work group that's working on this. Um, but I'm gonna champion this issue um, until we get it done. Great, thank you. Uh, question number three, um, I had that one down for Katie. Um, so what is your plan for dealing with Washington State's regressive upside down tax code? Will you lead on taxing large corporations and wealthy individuals? Do you support a progressive income tax, a capital gains tax, a more robust estate tax, and a tax on companies paying excessive compensation to some employees? Yes. Um, I think I partially answered this in the first question, uh, but like I said, Washington has the most upside down tax code in the nation, and I am running in part to make that tax code fairer to working families and individuals and to ensure that the wealthy are paying their fair share. I have already begun this work. Um, as some of you know, I am a board member of Washington's Paramount Duty um, and have done some advocacy around ensuring um, that we are passing a capital gains tax um, and a progressive income tax. Um, I have been watching um, the work of our uh, tax reform work group very closely. Um, I think it's critically important um, that, you know, the timeline for that work is now maybe accelerated because of our huge growing budget deficit. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to be not just watching that work, but hopefully uh, next session, um, actually leading and helping um, to, to make our tax structure fair. Uh, I was starting to talk about the B&O tax, which is based on gross receipts. And I have to say, so I've had this conversation with so many, particularly small businesses that are getting hit really hard in our district and you know, throughout the state. Um, and they need more relief now because of the COVID-19 crisis. Um, but we also need to make our b &O tax structure fairer. For 30 example. seconds. Um, and so I um, am absolutely devoted um, to being a leader on ensuring that we put forward a proposal um, that has a progressive income tax 
um, maybe a high earner's income tax with commensurate reductions in sales tax, property tax, and look at how we can reform our B&O tax. Um, and I wanna be a bold champion. I think we need to use the bully pulpit um, and we need to utilize um, you know, a variety of stakeholders to get this done and to make our tax system fair for all Washingtonians. Thank you. Uh, question number four, uh, Jeff. Hey Sarah, do you support efforts to combat the economic impacts of systemic racism by supporting laws that target inequality in areas like housing, education, and intergenerational wealth? Please provide examples of such laws that you would advocate for and lead on. Yeah, I think this is an, um, an excellent question. Um, so I think there's systemic racism um, in housing, education, and intergenerational wealth. Um, and I would want to be a leader on this um, in the legislature. I would first say um, that I, in all of my policy work, as including as chair of the King County Women's Advisory Board, employ an equity and inclusion lens. And I think that in doing this work, it's most important to hear from the impacted communities, including communities of color, um, and let them drive um, those decisions in regards to policy. Um, but I want to be a convener um, and also a leader as an ally um, in this work. So in terms of education, um, you know, I think we have a huge access, access, a lack of access to quality early learning. Um, and, you know, I, I think that the kind of systemic um, racism of our education system starts in lack of access to quality early learning. It's much more difficult for people of color and low income folks um, to get access to quality childcare. Um, we need to make that easier. We also need to ensure that we're doing uh, things to look at the disproportionate impact of suspension and the use of discipline in our schools. The way that it's applied is racist um, and it's unacceptable. And to me, um, it unfortunately leads to oftentimes the school to prison pipeline. Uh, we need to look at how we can reform our truancy, our truancy laws um, in uh, the public school system, because that is truly, you know, Becca's bill is truly, to me, creates a school to prison pipeline. We need to look at um, a lot of the, the ways in which um, there's systematic racism in the housing. Um, you know, particularly um, eviction laws um, and just who can get access to housing. We need to look at um, it in terms of intergenerational wealth by expanding uh, opportunities for home ownership um, as well as affordable housing um, and to kind of remove some of those prohibitions, uh, particularly um, due to individuals that could have been criminally justice in the criminal justice system. Um, so I am completely committed to working with a variety of stakeholders, but primarily folks that are more, most impacted, communities of color, low-income communities, in addressing the, system, the systemic racism. Mm -hmm. um, and you. I'd love to lead on this. All right, so let's um, go ahead and move into follow-up questions. Uh, and the responses to these are one minute, one minute apiece. Um, and folks on the call, if you raise your hand using the raise hand button or message me in the chat box, uh, we can get going. Brittany, go ahead. Hi, Sarah. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your environmental priorities. Yeah, thank you for that question, Brittany. Um, I'm running in part uh, for the state legislature to be an environmental champion. I have a long history of leadership on this issue as a board member of watching conservation voters and an uh, environmental advocate. So I have a Green New Deal plan. Um, it's, it's on my website, but I think we absolutely need to put a tax on carbon um, and invest that in clean infrastructure, um, as well as green energy jobs to grow our economy. So seconds. Um, in addition to that, I think we need to expand public transportation options um, and ensure that we're doing something um, to really address the carbon emissions from our public transportation system. Part of that is looking at a sustainable and more equitable and environmentally friendly revenue source for public transportation. I'm in favor of an air quality surcharge fee. I'm also uh, in favor of a clean fuel standard. I think we need to get this done to reduce uh, the emissions from our transportation sector. Lastly, um, I think we need uh, to lead on the environment. That was time. Uh, okay, thank you. I'd love to talk more. <laughs> <That's> okay. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. I think I had Mackenzie next. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Sarah. So a question I have is, what do you feel are the, the top two most important issues for residents here in District 36 that you could actually have an impact on? And what kind of legislation ideas would you have for those? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think there's, you know, a couple. One of them is progressive tax reform, which we talked a lot about. Um, I talked, I talk a lot um, to individuals that live in the district um, that want to make sure that we have a fair tax structure, particularly now, so we can invest in vital social services um, and in small businesses. Um, another is the affordable housing crisis. Um, I think people are really concerned about affordability, um, and part of that is not having access to affordable housing or health ownership opportunities. Um, and so I think we need to create more affordable housing. I think we also need to look at uh, things like rental stabilization um, to ensure that people can afford to live where they work. Uh, public transportation is also another huge issue for people in our district and ensuring that we're um, you know, curbing climate emissions. Um, and then lastly, I would say education. Um, I'm running you know, in part to be an education champion in the legislature. Um, I talk to a lot of parents that are I'm concerned about the quality of our schools and I wanna make a difference. Thank you. Uh, Elizabeth. There we go. Can you hear me? I can. Yay. <laughs> okay. Sarah, I, I kind of wanted to ask you about um, some of the work that you were doing last year as, as um, we were doing a lot together and, um, and talking a lot about um, things like public health system and how things actually play out in real life. The backdrop became... Um, the the sudden revelation that the trump administration was was separating children from their families and um you became extremely busy helping to write those injunctions to stop that practice and i'm i'm just wondering how how that work went and how that maybe enlightened you and is going to inform your work in the legislature yeah, I think that's um, a great question. So just like our criminal justice system is broken and it's racist um, and unfair, uh, so is our immigration system. Um, you know, and I think because of that um, and because of the fact that, you know, people that are legally seeking asylum too, you know, too often are detained and I think illegally imprisoned and in this case separated from their families, I volunteered to work on the family separation litigation um, for my boss, AG Bob Ferguson, um, you know, and I'm not necessarily going to talk about that litigation, but I'm going to talk about the fact that you know, I think so many policies that the Trump administration is imposing on people, particularly the most vulnerable, are unconsciousable. Um, and I stood up in the office and said, you know, I want to be part of this litigation um, to enjoin these practices of separating children from their families uh, because I think they're unconsciousable. Um, and that's the kind of leadership that I'd want to show in Olympia. I mean, if something um, to me is unjust, um, or affects vulnerable populations that can't speak out for themselves. I think it's critically important that those are that have the bully pulpit um, use that bully pulpit, um, you know, to speak up. Um, and okay. that uh, was to, oh, time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, any further questions, Jason? Yes, Sarah, could you speak a little bit about uh, uh, child care? Um, I know COVID-19 has really decimated uh, a lot of the daycares that uh, in Washington State. Could you speak a little bit about uh, uh, the problem and, and, and how to go forward? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that question, Jason. Um, so I've been a leader on this issue as chair of the King County Women's Advisory Board, primarily working with King County Council Member Cole Wells. But, you know, King County's in a child care crisis. We had a child care crisis uh, prior to the COVID-19 crisis because there just isn't enough supply of child care and it's too costly. Um, now, 25% of child care fit centers in King County have been closed. Many of them will not be able to reopen. And I think we all know that we need quality childcare in order to get families back to work. So my plan is to 
provide childcare uh, centers with assistance through a specific loan or grant program for those centers to be able to keep them afloat and also child care providers um, with access to living wages um, and a career ladder. I also think we need to do more about affordability and ensure that child care is affordable and accessible to all working families. Right now there are huge equity issues and working families who need it most being unable to obtain child care and I want to fix that. Thank you. All right, we are out of time. Uh, so uh, if you would like to um, get, take a minute to wrap up, um, please go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you all um, so much for the great conversation tonight. Um, looking around this Zoom chat room, um, it has just uh, been such an honor and a privilege um, to work with you in getting out the vote and you know, creating one of, I think, the best political operations in Washington state. Um, I'm running a political campaign um, that is a grassroots campaign. Um, and I wanna provide bold leadership in Olympia that models my strong grassroots campaign. Leadership that is all about the issues of people in the 36th district and not about special interests. I am honored to have the strong support of so many elected officials in this district and precinct committee officers, over 50 precinct committee officers are supporting my campaign. Um, I would be honored to have the support of the 36 district Democrats. Um, um, and I've really enjoyed our conversation today. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much.